If you want to invest for yield, you want to absolutely maximize the amount of rental income you can collect, where are the best areas to buy? Well, in this video, I'll tell you. But after that, I'll share why I think this might not be the best way of looking at how to invest. We're actually going to look at two different data sources to answer this question. We're going to start with this list of the 25 top postcodes by yield, and we'll link to the original below. As you can see, both of the top spots go to postcodes in Nottingham, NG7 and NG1, where the average yield is supposedly over 11%. I know a bit about Nottingham, and I know this isn't right. I think all the yields in this list are probably overstated, but as long as they are accurate relative to each other, then it'll still tell you something. The other problem I can see with this is that these are going to be skewed by students. So NG7 and NG1 are both big student postcodes. So you have lots of houses rented out by the room. The yield on those is going to be higher. So this is not necessarily going to be representative of what you could achieve with a normal family buy to less investment. Next on the list is Bradford BD1, and this is more the type of postcode I expect to see on this list. The thing to notice here is just how low the average rent is. So both the average purchase price and the average rent are really, really low. What that means is potentially, even though the yield is high, you're going to have to buy multiple properties, more properties than you otherwise would, to get to the same actual number of pounds compared to if you bought elsewhere. And that could be a good or a bad thing. We'll talk more about that later. Next on the list is Manchester M14. This is an area that includes Fallowfield and Rushome. As you can see, the average asking rent there, much, much higher. And rounding off the list, Newcastle upon Tyne, NE6. To be honest, a postcode I don't know much about. When I'm in a situation like this, where I come across an area I don't know much about, I use a website called streetcheck.co.uk. If you put in the postcode, it gives you lots of demographic information, crime stats, things like that. It's still very top level, but it's a good kind of entry point to understanding the makeup of an area and getting a bit of a feel for it before you dive in deeper. Let's move on to another data source now. This one it comes from Zoopla, and instead of looking at individual postcodes, it's looking at whole regions. And that means that the data is less granular, so in a way you can tell less from it. But in another way, it's kind of more reliable because it's going to be based on a larger number of properties. It's not going to be so easily skewed. And it can also be more useful in pointing you towards a whole area to look at rather than one very specific postcode. If you look at this list, the thing that really jumps out immediately is that other than Burnley, all of these areas are in Scotland and the Northeast. So you're getting very clear pointers about where in the country to look if yield is what you're after. The other thing to notice about this list is that the average rents are really low. The UK average is well over a thousand pounds now. So in most cases, these are about half that. So what that tells you is that high yielding isn't necessarily about high rents. It's about low purchase prices. So again, if you look at the list, the average rent is low, but the average property price is also very low. So the way to maximize yield, it seems, is not to go for properties that happen to produce a really high rent, it's to go for properties that are really cheap. And that, again, is why those parts of the country are the ones that offer the value. Because if you look at the Northeast in particular, it just hasn't had a lot in the way of capital growth in this cycle yet. That's why prices are low, and that's why yields are relatively high. And that links nicely into what I was saying earlier about why I don't think yield alone is the right way to look at how to make a property investment. Because in all these areas, yields are high because prices are low. Prices are low because they haven't had much growth. And they haven't had much growth because they're in the types of areas that tend not to get so much capital growth. And when they do get it, they don't get it till later in the cycle. So whereas areas like London, the Southeast, even the Midlands and the Northwest are now having good capital growth, these areas haven't really had it yet to the same extent. As a result, you could easily find yourself investing in one of these areas and going, oh great, I'm getting a gross yield of over 8%. That's amazing. But then if you get very little in the way of capital growth, you could actually, in say five years time, have been far better off investing in somewhere where the yield is a few percentage points lower, but the capital growth was a couple of percentage points per year higher. And we will find that when you look at your total return, your rental income and your capital growth, you actually will have done far better by going for the property that isn't so high yielding, but is in a location that's more oriented towards a mix of income and growth. The other thing to keep in mind, and why I don't think this is the complete story, is that what we're looking at here is gross rents. So this is before any expenses are deducted. And again, as we've seen in all these areas, yields are high, but rents are low. So by the time you start deducting some expenses off these rents, 
they can actually look a lot less attractive. For example, take something as basic as a gas safety certificate. That will cost more or less roughly the same, no matter how expensive the property is, where the property is. Okay, you're gonna pay a little bit more for labor in some parts of the country, but there's not a big difference. As a result, if you've got a property where the rent is only 400 or 500 pounds a month, just paying for a gas safety certificate, which you'll have to do once a year if there's a gas supply, could wipe out a month's profit by the time you've also taken off your mortgage payment and whatever else. Whereas if you had a property where the yield is lower, but the rent is three times as high, you're making a far smaller dent in it. And the same goes for all kinds of other minor repairs. Replacing a washing machine or fixing a leak is going to cost you pretty much the same whether the rent is 500 or 1500. Therefore, when you look at your net yield and you've deducted all costs, you might find out that the return that you're making from these types of properties is less attractive than they first appeared. This is something that I have got personal experience of because I had a few years ago a real situation where I had to choose between a more expensive lower yielding property and a more expensive high yielding property and I chose the cheaper one and it didn't work out so well. I've recorded this video where I show you what the properties were, I break down all the numbers and show you just how much money I missed out on by making the choice that I did. So do go and watch that one next. 